So now, if you turn the page, we are now going to disturb the equilibrium. And that is where Le Chatelier's principle comes in. You only have Le Chatelier's principle once you've had uh, uh, equilibrium, and that is now changing. At this one, Le Chatelier was not in play because there was no equilibrium, right? We started off, there was no equilibrium here. So that was not what Le Chatelier was about. Then we had equilibrium. Where does Le Chatelier apply? Only once you've had equilibrium and it is disturbed, you do something to the equilibrium. Then you have the, um, Le Chatelier's principle. And if you look at Le Chatelier's principle, I know you know it by heart, right? When the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed, why closed system? Otherwise, it would ne never reach equilibrium, eh? Right, if it's in a closed system, it will reinstate a new equilibrium and then the important thing, by favouring the reaction that opposes the disturbance. By favouring the reaction that opposes the disturbance. Right, so let's apply that to this equation. If we look at this equation, they give you the equation, they tell you delta H is negative. Right, what will the KC value be? KC value, products divided by reactants, right? So it's C to the second times D over A squared as well. Okay, so why is the B not there? It's a solid, right? And the solid's got a concentration of one and it doesn't come in. Right, so we leave that one out. So now, what is the brackets? The brackets is a concentration, which is moles per volume. You gave me that one. Now let's start thinking. You've got equilibrium, which means at that specific temperature, you have the right concentrations to give you the right answer. Right, you've Googled the answer, you know what the answer is supposed to be, you get the right answer because there's equilibrium. And now I'm going to change something. Now the first thing is I'm going to add A. Now if I add A, I'm adding moles of A, right? So what I'm doing is I am adding moles. And if I add moles, what am I doing? I am changing the concentration, right? What is the relationship between moles and concentration? They're directly proportional, right? So if I add moles, I am increasing the concentration. And that is actually my disturbance, the fact that the concentration of A increase. Because now, that gave me the right answer, and now I added A down there. What will happen to that value of that side? It will become smaller. Eh? If I put something in there, this change. But it's not supposed to change. At that temperature, it should give that answer. What's the system going to do? It's going to move the things around until it gets that same answer. Right. So, I've increased A, and what does the Chatelier tell you? According to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will react to decrease A. Right. Oppose the disturbance. And then, how can it decrease A? Now, if you think about a container with A's and B's and C's and D's, right, if I want to add something, I can take it and put it in, right. If I want to remove something, that's a little bit more difficult. We'll talk about that soon. Okay, remember, I'm going to talk about taking out. That's difficult. Right, but how can the system put things in and take things out? It doesn't have little fingers to take it out. It has to use it in order to make it less. Or it has to produce it in order to make it more. So if I want to increase A, if I increase A, the system wants to decrease A, it wants to make the A less. And the only possible way to do that would be to do the forward reaction. Because that will be using A, and then the concentration of A will be less. Right. So... I added A, that means the disturbance is a concentration of A increase. The shattered layer tells me the system wants to decrease it. How does it do it? By favoring the forward reaction. Right, but we're making money, eh? Is this going to make money or not? What's happening to C and D that I want to put in bottles? Well, if I favor the forward reaction, I end with more C and D. So that's a good thing to do if you want to make money, eh? Right. Okay, and how about KC value? 
No temperature change, no KC change. Right, so that stays the same. Let's look at the second one. This, this time I'm going to add C. Now C is on that side. Adding C means the concentration of C increase and the system wants to decrease that. So what's it going to do? If it wants to decrease D, it wants to make it less, the only way to make it less is to use it. So it will use it by doing the reverse reaction. It will favor the reverse reaction. And if the reverse reaction is favored, to use the C, what's going to happen to D? If it's using C, it's also using D. So that's not good if you want to sell D, hey? Right. Okay, but the KC once again remains the same because we don't have a temperature change. Then the third one there, if A is removed, now we're taking things out, is that going to increase or decrease rates of reaction if I take things out? It's actually going to make things slower, right? But we'll talk about that once again when we get to the graphs. What happens is if I decrease A, then the system wants to increase A. And the only way to increase it is to make it, to produce it. And it will do the reverse reaction to make new A. So the A the reverse reaction is favored, and what does that do with C and D? Decrease, not a good thing to do. Right. And KC value the same because we've got no temperature change. So that's the easy ones. Right. The one to, for me, okay, and let's do just the next one. What they now go and do is they add B. But remember, B is a solid. B is not even in my KC value expression. So adding, adding um, um, B is not going to change anything, right? It's not going to disturb the, the equilibrium. And this is sort of the catch. If you go and look at the metric exam uh, papers, every time in exam times, the, the kids send me WhatsApps and they say, Ma'am, why does the memo say this? And usually it's because they tried to move the equilibrium, but it was a solid. Remember, a solid is not in my KC value. Adding or removing a solid does not disturb my equilibrium. It stays the same, right? Okay, so that's a catch. Remember that one. Yes. So, then, uh, so let's say in this case, you say they use the zinc and an hydrochloric acid. Yes. For example, and for for the product side, and maybe they say you want to zinc make the. Yeah. The, if you make the zinc smaller, that was a, a only one way reaction, right? It will make that reaction faster, but there is no equilibrium. It's just a one way reaction, right? We are now talking about equilibrium, and there. The solid uh, um, has no effect on the equilibrium because it's not in my KC value. Right. So it's good to look at the previous work and this one. But remember, single arrow, you only have rate of reaction. Double arrow, we're working with equilibrium. Right. Okay, next one. And this, to me, this is the more difficult one. Volume. Right? Volume. Now, if I decrease the volume of the container... Now, look at that equation once again for concentration up there. If I changed the volume, can you see I'm changing the concentrations? Right. So if I change the volume, I'm changing the concentrations. They're saying they are um, decreasing the volume. Right. The volume of the container is decreased. So if I decrease the volume, what am I doing with the concentrations? What's the relationship between volume and concentration? Inversely proportional. So if I make the volume smaller, I make the concentrations bigger. I'm pushing them closer together. Then the concentration is bigger. It's going to happen faster, right? But the other thing to remember is everything is in the same container. You're doing this to the left and the right side, eh? Right. Now... What's more difficult is when you look at Le Chatelier, it doesn't talk about volume. It talks about pressure, right? So how do you go from volume to pressure? You have to remember grade 11, eh? Boyle's Law. Okay. You don't have to do Boyle's Law. Just remember, Boyle gave you the relationship between pressure and volume. They're inversely proportional. So if you are decreasing the volume, you are actually increasing the pressure. But it's very easy. 
Decrease the volume, what's happening to the pressure in there? It's increasing. It's, it's obvious, eh? Right. So, and what does Le Chatelier tell you? If we are increasing the pressure, then the system will react to decrease the pressure. Now, how can a system decrease pressure? It can't push out the walls or anything, so how can it decrease pressure? Now we have to think, what in that system is exerting pressure? Think about the solid. The solid is lying on the bottom. Is it exerting pressure on the, on the, on the container? No, it's lying down there. How about the liquid? All the, all, the, all the solutions, it's lying down there. Who's exerting pressure? Gas, right? Gas. So, we said the pressure is increased, now the system wants to lower the pressure. And it will lower it by producing less moles of gas. If you've got less moles of gas, it will be pushing less. Right. So now we have to go back to our equation up there. On the left-hand side, we had two moles of gas. Watch out. Solid, eh? Only looking at the gas. And on the right side, you've got three moles of gas. So if I now want to lower the pressure, what should I do? I should do the reverse reaction. Then I'm going to make for three moles of gas that's exerting pressure, only two moles of gas. So whenever you are working with volume, you have to remember to go to pressure. And with pressure, you have to remember it's all about moles of gas. So now we favor the reverse reaction. Is that good for our pockets? Are we going to make money? Reverse reaction gives you less C and D. Not good economics. Eh? But the KC value remains the same because it's not a temperature change. Right. When we went and we changed the volume, we changed all the concentrations, and the KC answer was wrong. And the system moved it around until it got the previous answer, the right answer for that temperature. Okay, now let's go on to the last one, and that is temperature. Now, if the temperature is increased, now that's actually easy, because if the temperature is increased, then the disturbance is an increase in temperature. And what does the system want to do? It wants to decrease the temperature. Now, with temperature, you have to think about energy, right? Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy. So temperature goes with energy. So if I increase the temperature, I'm putting in energy, the system wants to take away energy. It can't put on the air conditioner or something. It has to take away energy. How can it take energy away? By favoring the endothermic reaction, right. So it's always, if I have a temperature increase, it will always favor endothermic, right. But how do I know if the reaction I'm working with is forward or reverse endo or exo? Yes, nice. We look at the delta H, right. If my delta H is negative, what does that tell me? And don't just say exothermic. In future, we always say the forward reaction is exothermic. Right. Delta H is always for the forward reaction. Right. So the forward reaction is exothermic. Right. Now, if the forward reaction is exothermic, it immediately tells you that the reverse reaction would therefore be endothermic. So if you go back here, if we have to favor the endothermic one, you look at your delta H, and then you will know we now have to favor the reverse reaction in this one. So it's very important to remember. It will always, if I increase the temperature, it will always favor endo. But for some reactions, that's forward, and for some reactions, that's the reverse. You just have to check your own delta H. Right, and then the D and C, C and D, if I favor the reverse reaction, not good for my pocket because I've got less C and D. And how about my KC value? Now, let's talk about KC. KC being products over reactants. If I have the reverse reaction favored, if the reverse reaction is favored, what's going to happen to my products? It's less. And what's going to happen to my reactants? more. And both of them 
will make my KC value decrease, right? Now, what's very important when you answer questions on equilibrium, don't just talk about products or don't just talk about reactants. You have to say there's more products and less reactants because KC is all about ratio. You can't just say there's more products, therefore the KC is bigger. Yes, more products will make the KC bigger or less products will make the KC smaller, but whatever happens to the products, the reactants will do the opposite and that will also make my KC even smaller. Is that right? You have to refer to both. When we talked about KC value, we talked about ratio, right? The ratio between the two. And every answer you have to talk about both, right? Okay, now we're up to the catalyst. Now, if you only had one reaction, you said the catalyst would speed it up. And that's true, but how about the reverse reaction? It's also speeding up, and it's speeding up with the same amount. So they will increase equally, right? The rates will increase equally. And that's important if you have that two going over and two going back, and now you have 10 going over and 10 going back, right? They increase equally. And then we get to that part which is very important, and that is we've now talked about favored a lot. But what does favored mean? Now we sort of have a language idea of favored. Favored means better, or more, or whatever. Hey? But what means favored in this instance? It means that the reaction that is favored is faster than the reaction in the other direction. It does not mean it's faster than before. It's not compared to its own rate before. It compares to the rate of the other one. And we have to use that when we draw graphs. Okay, so let's go on with the next one. Here, I have how do they make my question more difficult? They make my question more difficult by not being straightforward with me. Right. If my reaction had an H plus in there, and they told you I increased the H plus, then it's easy. You say the system wants to decrease it and da 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 and you go on. Right. But what are they going to say to you to make it one step more difficult? They're going to tell you they're adding an acid. So now you have to know what is an acid. Give me a definition for an acid. Proton donor. Hey? So it's giving H plus off. So the moment that they tell you adding acid, you have to know what is the disturbance. The disturbance is the fact that the H plus concentration is going higher. Right. Second one, adding a base. Definition of a base, it's a proton acceptor. So the moment that they tell you they're adding a base, they're actually telling you the H plus concentration is decreasing. So that's acid and base. Let's get to silver nitrate. Now, the, when, the moment that you hear silver nitrate, you should back in grade 9 and grade 10. Where did you learn about silver nitrate? When we test for chloride atoms. Right, when you test for chloride atoms. So the moment that you put silver nitrate into a solution, what's going to happen is the chloride concentration is going to decrease. Now, I told you before that the system doesn't have little fingers to take things out and put in, but even we have got problems if we have to take things out. If I tell you, here is a container, there's a lot of chlorine atoms, please remove some of the chlorine atoms for me. What are you going to do? Take your best glasses and your best tweezers. And you're not even going to see them. Eh? They are too small to see. So how do you remove the chlorine atoms that are swimming around in the solution? Right. You go and you add silver nitrate. Because silver ions, the moment that they meet chloride ions in solution, they form silver chloride, which is a solid, and it forms a precipitate down at the bottom. So it's actually taking chlorines out of the solution, and what do you have? The disturbance is a decrease in the chlorine concentration. Right. And the same thing when you add a barium. Barium you can add as the chloride or the nitrate, but what does the barium do? It removes sulfates. So let's look at an example. Now this one, they are using, oh, sorry, I see there's a two minus up there. should be just minus. You're looking at this equation, they give you a chromate ion reacting to D, 
dichromate. Now, if you look at this, the chromate, I'm telling you it's yellow. The dichromate, I'm telling you it's orange. So we're looking at an equilibrium with this reversible reaction. And now the third thing you have to do is write down mass action expression is actually an old way to say the KC expression. Right. So write down the KC equation for that one. So it's products divided by reactants. You have CO2072 minus. What's important about the water? Solvent, pure liquid, doesn't come into my KC expression. Eh? Right, so the water should not be in there. Products divided by reactants and all the coefficients is up there. Right. Now the second question. How will this equilibrium constant be influenced in the following situations? And the first thing I ask is if I add sodium chromate, I put more chromate into the solution, what's going to happen to my Kc value? And the answer is nothing. Yeah, it stays the same. Why? No temperature change, right? No temperature change, no Kc change. And the second one, I'm adding hydrochloric acid. Stays the same. No temperature, no Kc change, right? Sodium hydroxide, Kc value stays the same. No temperature change, no Kc change. So you have to be very careful when they ask you, is the Kc increasing, decreasing, whatever? Check first if it's a temperature or not. Now they ask you, explain how the color of the solution will be influenced when sodium hydroxide is added. Now if I look at my equation up there, sodium hydroxide is not there. Sodium is not there, hydroxide is not there. It's not in my equation, right. So you seem to think, oh, it shouldn't have an uh, influence. But what do we know about sodium hydroxide? Come on, sodium hydroxide? is a base, right? And it's a very strong base. And what do you know about the base? It will be a, pro a proton acceptor, right? So what is the disturbance? The disturbance will be the fact that the H plus concentration will now be decreased. Right. So this is how they make it a little bit more difficult. They're not straightforward with you, but if you know NHOH base, then you can know what the disturbance is. And then, according to Le Chatelier, uh, according, I hope you're writing neater, to Le Chatelier's principle, The system will react to do what? Now, if I decrease H+, plus, the system will react to increase the H+. Plus. Now, I'm using a lot of up and down arrows. That's not allowed in the exam, eh? It's shorthand when you learn, but when you're writing exam, you have to write everything out. Okay, so how can he do that? It will increase the H+, plus by doing what? By favoring some reaction. Now, if you look at the equation up there, Right? Adding the base removed hydrogen ions. So now we have to do the reverse reaction to produce new ones. So by favoring the reverse reaction. But that, that is not the answer to the question. The question was what's happening to the color. So we have to go back to our equation and look at it and see, okay, we are favoring the reverse reaction. So what will happen? We will form more of the yellow CrO4 minus chromate ions. And 
I always have to talk about the other side as well. No? So it will form more of the yellow ones and less of the orange um, dichromate ions. And therefore, it will look more, yeah, well, it appear, if you want the longer word, more yellow. Right. It will appear more yellow. Right, so they're adding something that you don't know, but if you can recognize it as a base and you've got the disturbance, then it's plain Le Chatelier from there on.